Today on the Mr. Maple Show podcast, Tim and Matt interview Greg Page, Director of Horticulture at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. We appreciate y'all joining in for us today. If you hadn't already, go ahead and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all podcast platforms. Give us a five-star review. Helps more people find us. Hey, guys, I'm Matt, and we've got a great interview for you today. Um, We've really just been hitting home runs on this trip. I'm really excited about it. Uh, We we tricked Greg into joining in. Mark was originally not able, and so uh, we've twisted his arm. Well, then Mark was able to, and we said, now you can't back out. We've already got you. So you're in our web. Uh, So we're here today with Greg Page, and we're going to talk to him a little about some horticulture. Now, Greg Page is the director of horticulture here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. We're live on site here at the J.C. Ralston, and it is one of my favorite arboretums in the country. And... Greg, we've we've known you for quite a few years, and it's so exciting to see you here in this role. I think you've been here for about a year now at the J.C. Rouse. It's been a it's been a very fast, frivolous year. Um, but <laughs> I, yeah, it's it's I've come here. I've been coming here for you know twenty five years or more, and um, you know we were talking yesterday. Um, I was at the Bartlett Tree Research Lab for about 17 years, and you know, life throws you curveballs, things change, um, and that the timing was just right. Um, we've, we've, uh, my wife grew up here. We've got family here. Um, uh, we've launched our daughter out into the universe. She's in college now. Um, I was talking to Mark about uh, some unrelated things, and I said, "Hey, tell me about this position that you have open." He said, "You're hired. <laughs> um, when can you get here?" And you know, so, we, we we talked through it, and uh, you know, one one fast year later, you know, you know, here 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 I am. I met you guys. I was trying to think last night. It might have been when I worked at Swarthmore College. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. You guys were in town getting cuttings or doing a talk or something. Then I worked at the Biltmore Estate, and, and we crossed paths when I was there. And all through the rest of my career, you guys have always kind of been so out there. places. Well, you, you've been at the best places, so inevitably think, we're going to go buggy if you're at those places. I don't think we ran into you where you're at the Cincinnati Zoo. No. Well, I haven't been there yet, no. but I'm, it oh. sounds like I may have to check that out if that's been one of the places you've worked. You've got to go to the Cincinnati <laughs> Zoo for a multitude of reasons. Um, they've got a neighbor nearby, Spring Grove Cemetery, that you guys would absolutely lose your minds over. So We've shipped plants to the Cincinnati happen. Zoo. I know they have quite a, a yeah. horticulture-minded setup there. Steve Foltz and Scott Berline are the two masterminds behind that. Steve was a huge influence in me from a horticulture standpoint. I, I can't believe you guys haven't been there. They do a big lecture series. You should uh, throw your hat in the ring for hey, that. We're all about it. Uh, <laughs> these days we've been getting away more and going and doing this kind of stuff when we go yeah. do lectures, and it's kind of fun. We can schedule some podcasts with some of our favorite people. And one of the best things about this podcast is an excuse to, to catch up with people like you. So it's like, hey, let's go visit our friend and uh, – catch up and see what's new with him. And then also our customers are a lot of collectors. And so it's fun to open them up to the academic side of things. It's fun to kind of give them some new horizons on what's out there. So, uh, you know, it's your background is uh, in public gardening, but so many different things from plant exploration. Um, Speak a little bit about how you got into horticulture. What kind of, what kind of, was there a moment when you realized that, you know, public garden and horticulture was kind of your thing? Yeah. Um, I've always been, uh, somebody that's been outside and gravitated outside. I had a great grandmother that peppered me with books as a young person, uh, birds, trees, plants, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And always gravitated towards doing stuff outside. And, you know, my, my first career ambition was to be a, a cowboy and that, that doesn't pay very well. <laughs> wow. And, uh, the jobs aren't that, that many. And, um, you know, uh, did a did a stint. I got a two year degree in, in forestry. Really like that, but again, it was hard to find find work um, that that paid really well and kept me in. I was in Virginia at that time and worked for a while. And um, 
did a did a uh, an internship at a nursery and got all sides of that from the landscape design landscaping um you know growing the plants and, and all that and harvesting things and that really got me interested and um went to virginia tech and applied for internships that you know the, the key was it had to have housing mm-hmm. and um i applied for a job at the cincinnati zoo as an intern and that was the moment that i always tell people was my wizard of oz from from black and white to color wow um i, I my first day there I met the intern coordinator at the administrative building, did all the paperwork, and he said, you know, go up those stairs, go outside. Uh, your boss, Rob Halpern, will be out there. He'll pick you up and take you down to their, their shop. And I opened up those doors out, and they were had their spring bulb display. It was in full uh, glory. There was a peacock on the main lawn with his feathers unfurled. Oh, my goodness. There was gibbons and lions roaring in the background. And that's when I knew I wanted to work in a public garden. First place I did a tour, first place I worked with interns, all, all that stuff. And just being immersed in creating these, you know, green horticulture environments and interacting with the public too. I always liked doing that. And it was off to the, off to the races from there. Well, you've, you've been at some of the most amazing places. Uh, now at the Ralston as the director of horticulture, what, what are some of the things you do here uh, at the JC Ralston? I mean, that's a, like, such a, a big term, uh, director yeah. of horticulture. I'm like, yeah. man, you, you, that's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it encompasses it's, a lot of things. It, it does. And, and, uh, you know, there's, I've got lots of colleagues in the, in the public horticulture world that are directors of horticulture. And I don't think anybody does the same thing at any, any particular garden. And, um, what I like, uh, there's lots of things I like about being here, but, I'd spent a lot of my career working with volunteers and was away from that for 17 years oh. working at Bartlett. And I didn't realize how much I missed that mm-hmm. and working with, with that group of people that's so dedicated to, to working with something and learning. So that was a huge draw and a huge part of what I enjoy about working here. But this is the first director of horticulture they've had here and just working to kind of get the garden into the, uh, you know, uh, a better place with pruning and, and planning and planting and upgrading some things and kind of steering that direction with with lots of help from from staff um you know a great gardener uh my my, my crew of folks is, is absolutely fantastic to work with um you know tapping into mark's creativity yeah. and the things that he wants to do so so that and the other side of it too is our relationship with the university is building those relationships as a, as a as a new person and trying to do a lot more with the horticulture program with extension and the research side of of, of what we do you know um, i don't know if mark mentioned we've got a research nursery um off-site at lake wheeler and working with close with tom rainey uh from Mount horticulture research on that tom's been a friend and a hero of mine forever so it's cool we're gonna to twist involved. our tom's arm he, he lives like 20 minutes he's from not me. that far i know right he's not I, that far i run into him when i'm out to dinner but i, I he, need to twist his arm and get him on here he gets trees from us all the time too of and course. comes pickups yeah. and yeah it's just we we haven't grabbed his arm yet to get on the podcast we're I, definitely gonna have to do that i tell hey, everybody I that'll help. listen this is such a special place like the the jc ralston historically uh for what it is i mean it's mimicked all over. Like, the, like literally, it is the gold standard. You know, we're out in Oregon, and those guys are like, we want to be like Tom Rainey, and we want to be like the Ralston mm-hmm. and what they're doing there and what they're accomplishing. And, I mean, you hear it everywhere you go. I mean, you can be overseas. It's like this place is really becoming the gold standard for, it really, for what it, it really is. Has, really I tell has. everybody I can to sign up and join the, the Ralston every time, you, every chance you get. And it's That's been good. super gracious to us over the years as well, so it's something we always – I always try to, you know, recommend the Ralston because it is, uh, it's that place. Yeah, I, I've been lucky to travel through Japan quite a bit, and every nursery you go to there either has a picture of JC or has a JC Ralston hat right. or has that relationship, and 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 um, that's a huge legacy and a, and a lot of history. And I like that about working here too. You know, I can remember I was at the Scott Arboretum outside of Philadelphia, and JC would bring interns through, and I would try to make sure that. I was someplace close to the parking lot when he pulled in right. so I could at least say hello to him and, 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 and get to, get to see him. And, you know, that legacy preceded him. And, to, you know, I think about all the times that I've walked through this garden, not working here and never really realizing that I would end up here. It's kind of, kind of surreal to, to do that. Tim and I were actually talking yesterday in the hotel and I never met JC Ralston, but we were like, what an impact this guy. We never, we never met had on our careers because yeah. He was trading signs with Bob Bullington. He was trading signs with <laughs> J.C. Ralston. My dad was getting signs with Bob Bullington. That's how he got into this. Yeah. 
we were coming down here early on getting sawn wood from plants that Jay, so it's like it's ridiculous how mm-hmm. much impact this guy had on our career from from Mark to you to Dr. Creech to just everybody we're so buddies with. People. It's like this guy, you know, where would our careers be if this guy hadn't like pushed things so far in this region too? It's crazy. It's so many people on so many different levels. And the, the thing that's cool about working here is talking to people that knew him and either went to school with him or had relationships with him. Mm-hmm. And just that, that history is really, really rich here. So how long were you at the Scott Arbor? And that's a beautiful place. We we went and toured there. I think it was maybe when the Maple Society came to town. Prob- probably. Um, I did I did two tours there. Um, there's always been this itch inside of me. I, you know, I, I grew up in the South and I've I've lived all over the place. Mm-hmm. But there's always been kind of this this thing inside of me to want to to gravitate back towards. So um, I worked there for about five years, left, went to the Biltmore State, was at the Biltmore State for three or four, and got that, uh, you know, uh, got an opportunity to go back to the Scott. So all total, I worked there for about uh, 10 or 11 years, Um, again, with some great people and some luminaries in the public horticulture world. And, you know, that whole part of the country is just a mecca of of gardens Mm -hmm. and, and people that are doing amazing things and getting to build those relationships and still have those strong ties to that area is, is important. And that's something that I want to kind of bring here and Mm -hmm. have that vision is, you know, this is kind of that Delaware Valley of the, of the, of the South. You've got, you know, Duke Gardens, you've got UNC Chapel Hill, you've got Montrose, you've got this wealth of horticultural knowledge and gardens, and then the nursery industry outside of that, there's an opportunity for us to really promote that and, and work with each other. And I've got friends at all those places and have pulled them in to do things like like this to, to kind of build those relationships and, and keep those friendships going. So whenever it comes to the J.C. Rouston, I mean, it's got a maple as the logo. Yes. <laughs> and I, I, know, I know you definitely like the maples. I do. It was real subtle about bringing it back to maples, by the way. I'm glad he did. So, so what are your, some of your favorite maples? Um, there's, there's so many, and it's hard to, it's hard to pick just one. Um, Acer Triflorum, the three-flowered maple, has always been a favorite. We had a great big one at the Scott Arboretum that I just fell in love with. Underrated plant. Um, not used enough in the deep south. Like, it's heat tolerant. It's, it's shockingly... It's, it's shockingly you know. heat tolerant. Um, I like the bark much better than Acer Grissium. I like the fall color better. The structure of it is kind of multi-stemmed. Um, you're going to have to throw the Latin at me, the Shang Tung maple. Oh yeah. 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 Gosh, there's truncated. so much, there, that's a door that hadn't been opened enough. That That's such a great urban tree. Um, when I first started at Bartlett, I got some seedlings from some friends at Atlanta Botanic Garden and just watching those things develop in the worst possible soil. Um, <laughs> great bark, great fall color, nice structure, just an absolute bomb proof. And they go tree. nuts for that one in Texas cause you're still getting fall color. Yep. Like it's durable. Uh, it keeps your hands and down in uh, Dallas did a lot of development on these. Yes. We, we do about 15 of his different varieties mm-hmm. and we had a couple bad years of, of, uh, seed. So it kind of slowed us down, but we've probably got 15 to 20 cultivars in development of that. So like it's coming. Those are, yeah. those are, those are like, I would say a frontier that, that our collectors are, are at a fever pitch for too. Yeah, sh- should, should be. I'm rightfully so. Another one is, is Acer Scoochii. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, I've always liked that tree kind of from afar and, you know, living in the South where it's hard to do sugar maple and that one performs really, really well. But, um, went to visit Creech many, many years ago on a collection trip through Texas. And he took us to his his famous field where he's got them just lined up and all the little differences in them and ones that he selected. And, it's just, just such a great, great tree for that that bright orange fall color, and another bomb proof, um, soil adaptable maple. You know, there's there's so many of the. Um, you know, I like some of the evergreen ones that that do really well for us here. Um, Mark has always kind of passed those on to other other folks. Yeah. And when I first started at Bartlett, he sent some down to us, and those have always performed really, really well. But I, I like things that have multiple seasons of interest: winter, spring, summer, fall. Um, fall color is a big important thing to me when when selecting plants and man there's such a wealth uh in the in the maple world to to embrace that and you know any size or shape that that you can think of and it's such a great tree from for our shrinking home landscapes Mm -hmm. people don't have a lot of room for for bigger trees and you know we uh working at bartlett and doing research on on urban trees and you know everybody plants red maples and they're they're good trees but they're not for right next to the house or a parking lot island and there's such a wealth of and that's what i like about what y'all do with promoting them your great website 
to kind of look through and, and pick ones that work well for, for any kind of situation. Hey, I would I would kick it back to the Ralston. Everything you mentioned, there are incredible cutting edge specimens here at the Ralston of Leucoderma, sugar maple, mm-hmm. of you know the Scucci eye. Uh, there's some truncatums here Tim and I donated. There's some different plants around this Ralston. Like you want to see some full size, some some nice specimens. I mean, heck, they got the Hong Long last year, Lavigatum, that <laughs> the evergreen that Mark selected. There's so many cool plants. You could you could walk around this garden all day and look at different maples that look just, nothing alike. Just do that. Yeah, they just, just are completely different in diversity of, of of leaf shape, of type. It's interesting, especially those evergreens. A lot of people look at those and they're like, I don't believe that's a maple, you know. <laughs> and that that that. Acer Lavigatum Hong Long grafts right onto Palmatum. It's crazy. It's in section Palmatus. We can, it's as close related as like a Purosovinum or a Japonicum in some ways for, for compatibility. So it's crazy. Mm. It, it's crazy the amount of maples y'all have here at the J.C. Ralston. I think if anybody is in the Raleigh area or just wants to make a trip, it's worth this, it. This is a destination garden to check out and see all the beautiful plants. I know whenever we were in Oregon, and Talon was like, oh, the North Carolina trip is going to the J.C. Ralston. I'm going to be there. <laughs> like, everybody oh, knows that if you're into maples and you've never been to the J.C. Ralston Arboretum, you need to be here and yeah. see these amazing plants. Because yeah. everywhere in the garden, there's Japanese maples. And that was that was part of J.C.'s vision of, of this garden was mm-hmm. that he wanted there to be wherever you stood in the garden, mm-hmm. somewhere in your, your, your field of view, there was going to be a maple someplace. And, you know, that's, that's a little tidbit I, I, I learned doing a tour with Mark, but I try to bring that up whenever I'm taking people through. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, and even just walking through by myself, I always kind of catch myself looking for a Japanese maple or a maple. And there's, there's usually one in any, any place you stop in the garden, you can see one or two or three. And, you know, it's one of those things where uh, I, I really want to spend more time digesting the collection and, and really understanding where everything is. Um, I haven't developed that in my head yet. Um, Tim, our, our gardener, can tell you where every single thing is on, on every inch of the property. But it's funny because our Tim is encyclopedic as well. Maybe oh, it's a Tim God, thing. It must be a Tim thing. I can literally ask Tim Alderton, <laughs> like, hey, and he's like, oh, that came from Bulgaria in yeah, uh, it's 92. Ridiculous. It's like off the top of his head. I, I'm yeah, like, that's like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I feel it's dumb ridiculous. when I ask him questions sometimes. It's like encyclopedic memory of the succession part of me is like i don't need to remember where things are because he does but i want to i want to have that that recall where if somebody asks me where something is i can say yeah it's it's over here um and i'm slowly absorbing that as i I run around like a chicken with my head cut off uh, through through the garden here but yeah there's so much to, to see and do on on so many levels um, whether it be maples or herbaceous things or bulbs or, you know, all those different layers of the garden. And, and, you know, we pride ourselves on having that diversity and good examples of what you can do in your, your own home landscapes, too. So whenever you actually came over to take this tri- take this job, I believe it was when Mark couldn't make the Maple Society meeting. <laughs> yeah, he was telling us this anecdotal story yesterday. I didn't know this. It's serendipitous because yeah. we were at the Maple Society meeting and Mark was supposed to present... We actually ended, actually ended up interviewing Talon Buckholtz okay. during Mark's spot that you couldn't take, and that got you in contact with Mark. It got us probably more in contact with Talon. With Talon. We purchased his, like we were still friends with him, but it, yeah. it got us into more contacts, you know, and kind of talking about things a little bit. It was just kind of funny. It was it's a serendipitous. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good thing Mark missed that flight. It kind of helped that change everybody's path a and, little bit. And during, this, during when COVID happened, Matt and I were actually the people who originally started the planning process for the North Carolina meeting, yeah. and we were the person who originally asked you know, Mark to host it here at the yeah. Ralston and Mark to uh, be one of the speakers. Yeah, I think that's that meeting got off two years because of COVID. So. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's what, that's what I called, uh, he called me about is um, he was getting ready to go to Vietnam <laughs> and uh, he said, hey, uh, I hate to ask you this last minute. I was like, that's okay. What's up? Um, I, I, just to cover my bases in case something happens, um, I'm supposed to be back. And I was like, why do you do that to yourself? And he still does that to himself. Oh yeah, he did. Yes, that's how you're here. <laughs> yeah. That's how we got in this right. interview with you. He's right. like, Hey, can you cover for me? <laughs> right. And uh, he said, it was just, funny cause you, you didn't even know whenever I called you, you're no. like, no, what like, are y'all coming <laughs> down? <laughs> Mark's like, Oh, they're supposed to be there today and I can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he, he said, um, just, just to cover my bases, um, I, I'm supposed to do a talk for the, the Maple study. I was like, just go ahead and I'll do it. Just tell them I'll do it. So you don't have to worry about it. You can 
you can hedge your bets and, and not have to stress it and run through airports and you know, I'll, I'll do it. He's like, I'll, I'll send you one. I was like, I've got, I've got a couple that I can do. Just tell me when and where I need to be and, and I can do it. He's like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if I, I, I need to do that. And, and then, you know, here we are. I said, Hey, well, I got you on the phone. What's, what's up? Nice. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> It's it, it's so serendipitous, but that's how it's good timing works, isn't it? Like, that's uh, every, awesome. It's everything in life is about timing. So it really, it really uh, tell us a little bit about the horticulture at the Biltmore House. Uh, that's such an interesting place. You know, we, we'd worked with uh, Parker a little bit out there Parker. and talked to him about uh, some of the heritage plants. And mm -hmm. we were going to try to produce a few of like, you know, it's not cultivars, but it's plants that have some history, deep lineage history. history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I, I, I I've been very lucky all through my career to work at some amazing places with some amazing people. And, you know, Biltmore was, was no exception. Um, we were in Philadelphia and really wanted to move south again. And um, my, my ex-wife got offered a job in Asheville and I cast out a net to my public horticulture friends, oh, wow. um, Ian Simpkins and Hunter Stubbs. I, I knew really well. And I was like, any any kind of leads for anything down in that neck of the woods and hunter's like he, yeah there's something going on at the biltmore talked to terry stalkup talked to this person and i went down for an interview and they just happened to have a position in the wall garden and um cool. went down and what an amazing place to to work and walk in every day you'd, you know you'd be doing something you know deadheading roses and look up and there's mount pisgah up in the yeah. distance you know or just the house up up behind you is ridiculous um so much history and and great stories and um, I can honestly say that's one, like I think back about the people that I worked with there and we, it was really, really hard work. Um, but I laughed hard every day with everybody that I worked yeah. with there. I just loved the people that, that I worked with and really missed, you know, uh, had another opportunity come up to go back to Philadelphia at the Scott Arboretum and it was really, really hard to, to leave, but, um, you know, really, really loved living in that, that part of the world. But, um, the garden that I, I worked in was a wall garden where we did the change out of the beds and the perennial oh, yeah, borders yeah. and stuff. Um, you know, everybody else was, was having fun outside of that, <laughs> that the confines of that with the, the heritage plants and, and, and all the interesting things, but it was just a, a great place to work. I really learned a lot there. You know, I went in kind of green in the, the, the herbaceous world and it was a very herbaceous forward garden, the annual displays, the bulb displays, you know, it was so much energy and heartache and headache to, to switch all that stuff out every year. I but, can't imagine. Uh, you know, I don't know what the numbers are now. Now, I'm sure it's more, but you know, it was over 500,000 bulbs that we planted, over 85,000 mums that we would switch out. You know, I can't even smell a mum now. It gives me PTSD. Oh, <laughs> just, just handling those I can't things. imagine. And, uh, you know, it, we'd put them in and we'd get a frost at night and they'd all turn brown. Oh, geez. Um, you know, but uh, love everybody that I worked with there. I still st stay in touch with a, with a lot of folks, but it was just a, a great kind of stepping stone and, yeah. and, and learning opportunity. I'm very, very lucky to, to end up there. Well, I had to ask because you've been, it's like your whole resume is like hitters road. It's like you've been everywhere <laughs> awesome. Like it's like, okay, well, what was this like? This place is, you know, it's one of my favorite places. What's this like? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been, I've been really, really lucky. You know, it all kind of started at the Holden Arboretum. I worked there for a number of years. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another great place and, and great, great people and just a huge, you know, it was over 4,000 acres and um, I'd, I'd never driven in the snow before when, oh, I, when I moved up there and, you know, they, they, you know, they're outside of Cleveland, but they're lake effect. So Cleveland mm -hmm. would get a dusting and where we lived would get, you know, two to three feet of snow and I had a Mustang GT at the time, and oh, just not conducive to, <laughs> to to driving back and forth to the grocery store. It, you know, ended up in a snowbank, and it sat there for probably eight weeks, and just walked back and forth to work with snow. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been super lucky at some of the so, some of the places that I've been. So you've done a lot of traveling as well. Yeah, uh, you met, you mentioned you went to Japan. Might not have been to Japan too. Where all do you travel in Japan? Um, first time I went was with Mark, um, and we met, um, Brian Upchurch there. Nice. And, um... Was that when he was working for Taka? Yes. We went and visited him during that, too. Yeah, he had just started working with, with Taka. And, um, we flew into, um, uh, China, China to Japan, spent, uh, you know, uh, three or four days in Japan just bouncing around nurseries. 
and then went to Taiwan and, and did some some collecting. Oh, man. Um, Ethan Kaufman was on that trip. That was when Ethan was at uh, Moore Farms. But um, then I went back with Andrew Bunting, who was a good friend of mine from the Scott Arboretum. Yeah. Um, Andrew lucked into somebody that, that does some, some touring of nurseries that uh, he's a retired pharmaceutical rep. Mm -hmm. and um set up all the visits set up all the you know we actually went shopping for for plants at wow. all these different nurseries in japan and um this guy did you know all that hard horrible uh, packing and uh permits and uh, you know all, all that stuff oh that's incredible you get that all taken care of that's the best it, it, it was great but just to go to all those those places and talk about you know history and and uh you know, some of those guys are, you know, seven, ten generations of, of nurserymen. It's just so hard to get your, your head around that. I, I saw some of the foods y'all ate in Taiwan with them. <sighs> I, I told Taka when we were hanging out with Taka, my rule was nothing moving. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mark was sending me some texts from some of the things he ate with, with Taka. And I was like, hey, as long as it's still, uh, I'll play ball. But I'm not eating anything moving. I've seen some of the stuff he pulled yeah. on Mark. Yeah, Every I'm time not... I eat with him, it's a little more Temple of Doom. He starts yeah. not eating and he starts, I think he likes to mess with us. I'm, I'm not as, I'm not at, Mark really helped me kind of form those kind of travel, uh, travel uh, techniques of, you know, I, when you, when you go someplace like that, I want to, I want to, you know, when in Rome, right. I, I want to experience the whole thing. I'm adventurous too, yeah, but I, I don't, to, I don't, to, a, to a degree, right? I, I, I don't want to be the guy that just eats, you know, I just want hamburgers and steaks. Well, you know, I want, I want to, and but my only rule was similar to what you said. Um, you know, I, I don't want to eat anything that's, that's, that's alive. Um, but I, I ate everything. I tried everything yeah. that, that they put in front of me. And, and I think they kind of, um, I know Taka did this for sure. Um, they would throw some things in front of you and just kind of stand back. Oh, see Taka what, loves to screw with me. Every yeah. time I go, the, 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 the drinks start coming. Oh, God. And then Taka, I noticed distinctly, stops eating. And I'm like, Taka, I don't see, I don't see you yeah. eating this. So I, I, I keep an eye too. on him the whole time. I'm like, I <laughs> uh, uh, think things slowed down here. What, well, you're, not, yeah. you're not trying this first. You're just kind of la laughing at me trying. <laughs> yeah, let's see, let's see <laughs> so what this likes, American does. He likes to see my reaction when he hands me the, uh, like the hellfire kimchi. <laughs> oh. it's, you know, I'll play ball with that. It's, it's the... Uh, I, get, I get a little more chicken when it's looking at me or moving too much, but uh, yeah, we'll I, try, I try to play ball and experience everything I can as well. It's such a fun time. Well, Taka went to the United States for college, so he yeah. he understands American culture, and so yep. he under he, he probably finds it very entertaining oh, to yeah. watch us in his culture, and <laughs> then throwing out some things that you know maybe even a lot of them don't eat, sure. and then seeing if he sent me some things I struggled with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there was only one thing that I had to take out of my mouth. I was like, I don't know, Taka. This is whew. yeah, it just it wouldn't go down. He, he gave us raw chicken it. cutlets one time. I did that. I tried well, I only it. Did I did that it. once. Oof, yeah, that was rough. And he he talked me through it. He's like, you know, this isn't the same kind of chicken they have in the United States. Right. This this is fresh. It's not going to have anything in it. And it wasn't bad. But I was like, okay, I checked that box. Right. I, I don't, <laughs> right. I'm not going to. I'm not going to yeah, take a chance. We checked a lot of things off that I'm, night. It I'm, was I'm scary. Not gonna, I'm not going to lie. I did have an upset stomach after the last time with Alan or with, with Taka. But uh, talk about some of the other places you've got to go while collecting on some of your. You know, I think one of the things that's really interesting for our customers, uh, a lot of them are coming from a collector background, right? Mm -hmm. Especially through they're getting in through Mr. Maple. And we love exposing them to new stuff. So it's, it you know, some of the wild collecting or just some of the expeditions you get to go on through uh, so many of the great places you've worked. It's like, I don't think people see that side of horticulture. It's not it's not in your yard. No. You know, you didn't pick it up at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's something mm -mm. completely new to people. Um, and we love kind of exposing people to that more broader horticulture. They're not used to academia, right? They don't see that, yeah. that part of it. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the collecting stuff I've done has kind of been you know, conservation based, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm actually doing, a, I'm doing a talk on this at Winghaven in uh, Charlotte tomorrow on, on plant collecting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, you think about the conservation side of things and there's a lot of plants that are endangered uh, more so than, than animals, but plants aren't as sexy as animals. Right. So it doesn't get the same kind of attention. And, um, but, uh, you know, a lot of it is conservation based through a, a pretty big network of, of other public gardens. You know, we're not just going to some country and, and raping and pillaging. There's a mm -hmm. whole series of 
permits that you have to do and relationships you have to build to, to get there to, to kind of make that happen. And it's very difficult to, as you all well know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's hard to get to these places. Right. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, you're away from home and you know, you can't just bring any plant in the country. There's a, there's lists of things that you can and can't bring. That list seems to change by the minutes. Um, <laughs> when, when Mark and I were in Taiwan, it literally changed while we were there. Oh, the second time I was in Japan, um, focusing on magnolias and some other things, it changed while we were there. So it's really difficult to, to kind of get things through. So having those kind of parameters and lists of things and, and doing that research before you get there. So uh, I've been to Taiwan, been to Japan. Um, Japan was mostly nursery, not not wild collected, mm-hmm. but um, Taiwan was was wild collected, and it's relatively easy to to do that there. Um, I've been to Vietnam with Scott McMahon from Atlanta Botanic Garden and Peter Zale from Longwood Gardens. Um, Scott's got this great network of, of folks that he, he works with and um, has been going there for a number of years. So he's built those roads and those throughways. Mm-hmm. And um, we had lists of things that we were looking for. And that was an absolutely fantastic trip. Um, it's great traveling with people that you like because you're with each other in close quarters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but just to kind of have all that stuff kind of kind of ironed out. I mean, the adventures of it are so cool to us. Like, oh. it's just, it's so interesting. And I think it makes it more palatable to the home gardener, too. It's like, mm-hmm. not that every home gardener is going to have this super developed species. But when they do, there's a whole story behind it. Right. It's like, you know, th- this was identified, you know, on this mountaintop in the Five Fingers region. And yeah. it's like some, you know, there's a whole, like, I don't know. It's a, to me, there's a whole adventure involved in that. It's just, maybe it's a romanticism of it, it's I very, do, but it's, it's very so romantic. interesting. It's, yeah. very, it's very romantic. It's very Indiana Jones. It you is. Know, we, we were, uh, one of the days that we were in the field in, in Vietnam, um, you know, we finally got to where we were, we were starting to go. And I've spent a lot of time in the, in the mountains here. And I've got a pretty good eye for weather and, 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 and terrain and that kind of stuff. And at the corner of my eye, I was watching it starting to get dark off uh, the distance from us. The wind starts picking up. It gets dark and darker. And I was like, we, we got to turn around. We can't keep going there because this is coming. And it got to the point where we were literally running to get down and, and back down to some form of, of tree line. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very romantic. But um, a lot of the stuff that I've done has been in, in, in the Southeast, in the, in the United States. And that is also conservation-minded, um, building up germplasms of things, yeah. trying to spread that around to other gardens and other public horticulture entities, but also looking to see you know, if we might f- find something that's, that's landscape-worthy. Yeah. And it's always interesting to do that. But pretty much, you know, anything that's being introduced out into the, into the world kind of starts from from that fabric where oh. it, it was collected you know uh, in in uh, some far off place or you know thinking about scoochie you know or or other things leucodermae those those sorts of things it's it was it was found you know in in the wild um you know thinking about taxodiums and, and all those sorts of things you know that's that's kind of where that stuff gets started and um it, I hate that some people miss that that part of of getting plants because right. it's it, those stories are really really important and that that history is important. I think people get caught up in you know uh, keeping up with the Joneses, getting right. the same things that neighbors get. But um, and and you know to me that's why it's important to that there are people like y'all and the, and the Camellia Forest of the world, yeah, and, yeah, and people that are are doing these specialized things that. You know, it's not just about uh, the good quality plant material and diversity, but it's about how you how you got those things, and all those all those stories are 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 important. Oh, I think it's so intricate, and not everything's going to work for the home gardener. But how special is mm-hmm. it when it is? Like, yeah. The, the, then they have this treasure that that has this whole you know story behind it. I mean, who doesn't love it? You know, good plants often have good stories, right? I mean, a Almost lot of our gardens likes. are about people. They're about the stories. Mm-hmm. They're about uh, you know, people like JC Ross, like we go back to that from the beginning, but it's like, there's so much people involved mm-hmm. in, in the whole breakdown of why, why it's important. I mean, if it's a great plant on top of that, even better, but, yeah. Yeah. but I love the stories behind the plants. Yeah. It's, it's really, really cool and intricate. And that's, that's the, you know, one of the, we're, we're big here at the Ralston about promoting, um, thinking globally and acting, acting locally. Pro- mm-hmm. We've got such a wealth of good nurseries in North Carolina and then in South Carolina and then in Georgia and in the, in the Southeast and, and promoting all, all those people. So, um, you know, that's what's one of the things that I've always liked about what you guys are doing is, is there, it's, that is steeped into, you know, it's not just about the business selling plants. That's important. But it's all that history and how you got those things and 
the, the family side of what you guys have We've done always too. been wildly independent. It's one of our advantages. Mm-hmm. So that we kind of just do what we like. So it's kind of fun. Like, yeah. you know, the, uh, part of our goal is to never have to rely on too much else besides what we want to do. So yeah. it's kind of fun in that aspect of if we want to, if we want to go crazy and graph all of Dr. <laughs> Creech's scoochy eyes, then that's what we're going to talk about this year. And so we kind of get to just kind of go weird and wild and, and follow these little weird passions yeah. sometimes, but it's fun that way. It's how we enjoy it. So that's I appreciate that. But there's, it seems like this place is just on fire right now. You guys have been adding so many things, so many programs. Like I, I, I've been down here a lot and I haven't got to come down here as much since COVID, but my gosh, it seems like things like there's things have even ramped up like the home gardeners, they got involved in gardening and now it's like it did. The fever pitch didn't really calm down here. It feels like yeah, I, I don't think it did. Um, you know, I missed the COVID side of things here, but that's kind of when a lot of the educational stuff, all the YouTube stuff that we're doing, yeah. the midweek talks and all that, we, you know, th- we were trying to figure out how to stay connected to people <laughs> when it was hard to stay connected. Same here. Yeah. That's how we started doing yeah. this. No, it's, it's such a smart thing. And um, it's just continued to, to balloon. So, you know, we've, we've talked about, you know, do we continue to do the, the, the YouTube thing and, and uh, have stuff kind of piped out to the universe and, and, or should we go back just to relying on people coming? And there's still a big demand for people to, 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 that, that'll tune into these sorts of things. So, um, you know, in addition to me getting started, we've got a brand new education coordinator, Elizabeth Overcast. She's doing great things with children's programs and all the other educational stuff that we do. Um, I'd like uh, taking a part in that and doing those things too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've increased that with the, the um, Southeastern Plant Symposium that we do. That seems to get bigger every year. And I'm always amazed at the people that we get to come to speak, but then to see who's in the audience that yeah. comes to those to those uh, to that uh, that two day symposium. Um, it's 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 great. Um, and then you know our, one of our our secret weapons is Bryce, who does the classes right. for us. And I mean, one of the great communicators of horticulture. Oh I told him that God. yesterday, and he was like, "Well, that's a nice comment." I was like, "No, I mean it. You're like the greatest he's communicator I, of horticulture." I can't think of anybody who's who's better at that. I mean, he just like has going, a sincerity and a smoothness to him. I'm it's, like, it's, I'll it's, be like him. That's what I want to do. It's, <laughs> It's so it's so genuine, and his approach to to teaching people stuff. I I, I hope to absorb some right. of that when I do things. You know, I try to emulate that. But we've got a lot of those types of resources here, and you know, the big thing is is keeping enough in the tank uh, personally and professionally right. to to continue to to do things at, at that at that level. And I think we uh, you know it's it's nice that we get the the, the break for uh, the university at, at the holiday time where we can kind of. <sighs> breathe deep and then then dive back into it. Well, I'll tell you, as a super fan who lives four hours away in the (laughs) mountains of Western North Carolina, I'm closer to the Biltmore house over there. I I love your YouTube channel. So I know it's just the JC Ralston on YouTube and you should definitely go sub that. Uh, I I really enjoy being able to catch lectures, being Mm -hmm. able to, you know, I can't get down here on a, a Wednesday night sometimes three kids under six it's yeah, kind of hard to get away every day but you're in the weeds uh yeah I am so it's <laughs> it's uh it's great though to, to to feel connected and to get to see you guys and to see what you're doing yeah. I try to catch a lot of those Wednesday talks I'll, I'll see who you have on there and it's 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 inspirational to us I love that stuff. good that's good to hear and I, it's nice that we, we we reach people it's always whenever I do them it's always funny to kind of I don't, I don't get a chance to see who's in the audience until right. after but I've got some of my volunteers that I work with in Philadelphia are, are on um, colleagues from other gardens are on sometimes you know assaulting me with 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 questions and, and comments <laughs> right. um, but it, it's it's nice that to, to have that reach and it's such a great uh, one of the few nice things about social media oh it blows me away when people watch you're like what you watch us thank you like yeah, uh, yeah. I appreciate it now, now you've also got it where people can become members to the JC Rouston yeah and uh, being a member has a lot of different benefits uh, from uh, plant giveaways, mm-hmm. seeds, uh, different things. Y'all have got so many different things going on here at the J.C. Ralston. I know uh, Ralston Blooms and mm-hmm. a lot of other big events that happen throughout the year. And if you're not a member, you know, you need to be a member to really enjoy a lot of these things. If you're in this area on. and you're not a member, you're missing out. There's it's so many good things. It's such an easy thing to do. And it's always, you know, it always, it always amazes me when... Ralston Blooms is a good example. This this past year was the first one that I did. And really good reach into the community. Lots of people coming, you know, the the and the people that came that weren't members when we have it open to non-members always complain that all the good stuff's gone. It's like 
I'm really sorry, but you know, <laughs> if you membership need, if you, is not that hard. You membership, need to join. membership is great, and you can do it today. And they're doing it right over there. And then next year, you're one of the first people that comes in to get stuff. And this is going on. And this. And this. Um, it's it just behooves folks to do that. You know, it, it's it's there aren't many public gardens left that are free to the public. And this is one of the few ones, and it's you know in the spirit of, of JC, um, it'll continue to kind of kind of stay that way. You know, it would behoove us to to maybe think about doing something in a, a different direction, but I think we'd miss out on an opportunity to get people to to, to come here and, and experience it. Um, you know, in, in our stressful worlds, how lovely is it that you can park your car, come in here, and just be surrounded by all this diversity and plant material. And you'd never know that, you know, you hear the train that goes by, you hear traffic on occasion, but it all kind of melts away right. when, you, when you're walking through. Oh. And, and we're lucky that to have that here and, and also as part of the, the university. And for the students, you know, with all the stresses and strains that they have, they have the opportunity to come here and, 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 and experience I, this. I, I know that whenever I went to UNC, I had a different experience here. I became a member. I came to one of the events and they had propagated tons of plants <laughs> for a big uh, member giveaway. And I was so excited and they lined all the plants out in the field. And then all of a sudden it was go time. Yeah. And then it was the exact opposite of tranquility yeah. here in this garden. Yeah. All the members were fighting, running, yeah. kicking, screaming. Yeah. And going for, for now the they have so many plants. I've seen some of those pictures. It's like more plants than people. You get, <laughs> it, it's I, insane. I got to experience that for the first time this year too. And I had heard all these stories. I'd watched all these old videos and it was much more, um, uh, it was much more civil than than what it was explained to <laughs> I think, me. I think Mark's kind of gotten it to, uh, Mark, to the Mark, point where there's so many plants now. It's like everybody walks away with something. Mark's the ringleader, and he, you know, we've got the loudspeaker, and he kind of lays out the ground rules, and uh, everybody, you know, they pay attention. He he turns on the dad voice, and everybody <laughs> pays attention to him. But I mean, that's a great member benefit too. You're not going to find some of the things that that we put out there, and um, uh, Sophia, our our, our plant propagator nursery person ha has has the green thumb and the stuff that she's uh, producing and uh, once we get more time and she can throw more things and in, in flats and, and we can get things available to the plant cart that we have and for the, the giveaway I mean that's that's worth its weight and gold to become a member is just for that that membership this that place is such a giveaway. valuable resource for the southeast but literally everywhere I mean I, I joke but you go anywhere and it, it it's compared to here yeah, like that really it's, is. It's, it's like it's funny to go you, places and you know, hear, hear that. We're East Coast and West Coast now that we're doing the Buckholz Nursery, and it's like you go out there and you hear about the Ralston. Yeah, that's 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 it's insane. I mean, yeah. that's it's it's becoming. That's like I don't know. I'm I'm forever indebted to this place. Mark's been so helpful with us. So, uh, you know, it always has a special place in our heart. Sure, but uh, yeah, definitely sign up for everything you can with the JC Ralston. It's worth your time. Uh, we really appreciate you hopping on here and doing yeah. this interview with us, Greg. Uh, that was appreciate fast. you twisted your arm too hard. Uh, not hard uh, Mark, at all. Mark, Mark, Mark tricked you into this one, but it's I, I think the, it turned out not, great. It's not the first thing he's tricked me into. We've, <laughs> we've, we've got kind of a running understanding that if either one of us gets too uh, overwhelmed, we can we can throw up the the white flag. And uh, uh, he's got another talk coming up when he comes back from this trip. He's getting ready to go on. I was like, just. Just let me do it. Just, just give me the information. It's like, well, well next time y'all decide to do some tours, you'll have to come up and see our place in uh, North Carolina. Mark used to, I need he used to. to get away and bring a van full of members up there every now I and know. then. I think we're going to probably do a meetup at some point this, this year and uh, free delivery for some members down this way and bring some stuff down and maybe do some stuff. But I just appreciate y'all. It's one of my favorite places to tour. I can come here out of leaf or in leaf or any time of the season and, and just enjoy geeking out at all the plants. Always something to see. Uh, it doesn't Always. really matter what time of the year I'm, I, I, it, this is one of my favorite places. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, it's so lucky to bump into you guys. I'm glad you, you stopped by. Well, I really appreciate you jumping in on today's podcast. It's always fun to talk plants, talk plant expeditions, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes hear what got people into horticulture. Yeah. I mean, people are a big story when it comes to plants. Sure. And understanding the mindsets of what, you know, what creates this passion, what creates mm -hmm. this love for gardening. And it's always something that's always interesting to me. And uh is interesting to sort of you know hear some of your background that we hadn't heard before yeah yeah i mean it's it's all about legacy too you know the, we're leaving a legacy behind that's going to be here long after us and i think about all the stuff i've thrown in the guard in the yard in the gardens around the country that's going to kind of precede me you know that's a huge thing to, mm -hmm. to have done and uh mm -hmm. from a career perspective so very lucky and uh it's such a great community um 
as you meet people and those relationships stick. So um, glad to glad y'all stopped by. Well, outstanding. Make sure that if you you know follow us, make sure you follow us also on YouTube. We put out daily YouTube videos, and this podcast typically airs the following day after it's aired on the podcast platform on YouTube. So check that out as well. You know, we appreciate everybody so much. Remember, shop on MrMaple.com. Take care. God bless. And have a great day. Make sure to go sub the JCRA on YouTube. <laughs>